All right, guys, AQA Chem Paper 3 predictions. Let's do this. This is the last video I'm going to be doing, and then I'm retiring. All right, I'm done. I just got back from Nando's, feeling tired, but I'm feeling good. It's like 9.21 p.m. right now. Let's jump into this. As always, I don't have a clue what's going on, so don't listen to me, but let's look at what has happened historically. I'm going to try and be quick. I always say I'm going to be quick, and then it ends up being kind of a long video, but I'm going to try and fly through this based on the comments that you have left me I think for the community question that I did, uh, I think it was yesterday or the day before, based on which topics have come up so far in paper one and two. I'm going to look at that. Feel free, instead of this video or in addition to, scroll to that in the community tab and just look through the comments. There's some really good predictions from other people. Um, so we're going to go through this as quickly as humanly possible, but I might ramble in places, you know me, guys. So energetics and thermodynamics. Basically, you should see that this is just a uh, color coding traffic light system, basically from um, red all the way to dark green, lowest marks, highest marks, etc. cetera, um, year on year for the last three years, because I thought the last three years specifically would be interesting to look at. So with energetics and thermodynamics, hopefully you've seen my paper three high yield topic analysis video. Basically for the purposes of paper three, I've combined these two topics and these two topics together, primarily due to the required practicals. And there's some synoptic year two knowledge that sort of feeds back and forth between these year one, and then you got the year two topics. All right, so you got for uh, rate equations and kinetics, you have required practical three and seven. Okay, so just remember that um, and let's see what's going on. So three marks only in 2023, I would be revising these collectively. Obviously you got like the required practical side of things, but more specifically to my understanding, calorimetry has come up. So like Q equals MC delta T, um, combustion stuff like that has already come up for the energetics topic. So I'd be highly surprised if it comes up in paper three, right? So what I'm leaning more towards for thermodynamics and similarly for rate equations is the graphs. So you have the Gibbs free energy change graph where you have to do the gradient and then solve that. Remember the units, I've got a walkthrough on my channel of how to solve those questions. They're pretty easy, but they're normally like six marks. So if you learn the method involved and you can apply it to that question, it's a pretty pretty simple six marks. It just takes a little bit of time to do, draw the graph and stuff like that, okay? Exactly the same thing can be applied to rate equations where you have the Arrhenius graph, okay? So both of these things, uh, I would be surprised if at least one of them should come up from my perspective because it's new in the specification and AQA like to test you on it. And then there's obviously lower mark, like two, three mark questions that they can add on to these as well. So just try and revise them as a whole, but I would say pay specific attention to the graph style questions. Okay, that's just my two cents. I don't know what I'm talking about. Next up, transition metals, okay? Transition metals was also absent from 2023 and it's definitely a high yield topic. To my understanding, it came up in paper one, but it was very limited. So the things that you guys have mentioned that haven't come up is things like uh, transition metal colors, okay? More specifically, to my understanding, the ligand substitution equation colors, I think. That is, that is the impression that I got anyway. And then you have things like isomerism, so bidentate ligands, stuff like that. And then you have reactions of aqueous ions, which is sort of a follow-on subtopic, okay? That feeds feeds on from transition metals. And then you got the required practical that goes along with that, okay? So that is something that I'd be looking at. Actually, let's see if reactions of aqueous ions, where is that on the list? I'm literally blind. Oh, here we go, here we go. So reactions of aqueous ions was on for six marks last year. So actually it might not be that 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 common uh, this year considering it was received six marks last year and that is the only year that it has actually received any marks standalone as a subtopic rather than transition metals, okay? So I wouldn't be freaking out too much by reactions of aqueous ions, but if they haven't tested you on colors, they can sort of combine that knowledge together with transition metals. So I'd keep an eye on that one. Obviously outside of that, you've got the high yield topics that come up a lot, but that were also present in high marks for last year. So if we look at carboxylic acids and derivatives, they love to test you on the required practical 10. I think it's required practical 10, I'm pretty sure for this. So we've got 13 marks, 10 marks in 2017, 2018. And then we actually got two back to back zeros and then five and then a zero and then 11, okay? So even though this did receive high marks last year, we can see that historically you can have two back-to-back -back years of high marks. So I'd be revising this one just in case because I feel like it, this topic as a whole, carboxylic acids and derivatives, didn't come up a crazy amount in paper two. I think some ester stuff came up. Um, obviously, correct me if I'm wrong. And then you've got the mechanisms that are associated. So nuclear 
acrylic addition elimination and stuff like that. Okay, so I'd be revising this one just because it's high yield to cover my bases. I'm not super confident that it's going to come up for that much marks or at all. As we can see here, there are three years so far of zeros. Um, so just keep that in mind and it goes zero marks, zero marks. So there may be a pattern of, uh, that we can see there. I do not know. Okay, amount of substance is a given. Please revise this, guys. It comes up every single year for basically every single paper. It's the highest frequency topic of everything. Um, obviously, because it can come up in all three papers and it's just fundamental calculation abilities and amount of substance. You know it. You, you, if you watch my videos, you know it. I preach about amount of substance. All right. So acids and bases. Okay. This one came up for you guys. You said it came up. Apparently, buffer calculations hasn't come up, okay? And that's very surprising. So I would say revise um, buffer calculations the best you can, as well as all the associated weak acids content, so the Ka calculations and stuff like that. And then you've got the pH titration curves, and then you've got the half neutralization point with the pKa. So go over that as well if you can, because there apparently haven't been many graph questions, so they may throw the pH graphs in at you instead. And then you've also got the required practical for acids and bases that could come up as well. Um, so we can see in the last four years, acids and bases has been pretty low, um, but there seems to be a pattern of mark on, mark off, mark on, mark off, mark on, mark off, mark on. But you know, that could just be fluke. I honestly don't know. Uh, last year, we got five marks. What was paper one saying? Uh, acids and bases, 13 marks, okay, 16 marks the year before, 16 marks. So if acids and bases wasn't that present in paper one this year, which was the case to my understanding, I'd be revising it just in case to cover, you know, cover myself for paper three. All right. So what we got next? Let's see what's going on. So group seven, I would 100% be revising group seven. It was absent from paper 20. Paper three, 2023. But we can see there are years where like three back to back years with no marks. So 2018 to 2020, let's see what we have going on with group seven in 2018 to 2020. So nothing, we've got 13 marks in paper one 2019 and nine marks in 2020. So when it was present for decent marks in um, these two years, it was completely absent in paper three. But we did get that 2018 year with nothing at all. Okay. But as we can see, no papers for group seven halogens last year. So I would personally be revising this one. I'd be all over this myself. Does that mean it's going to come up? No, but you know, you got to go with high probability of things coming up um, and just sort of go from there. So what else do we have here? Alkenes. Alkenes is not the craziest topic. 4.7 marks. That is skewed heavily by the 11 marks in 2017. So I'm essentially going to ignore this one. Obviously, none of this includes the MCQs. Okay, the MCQs are completely random. I have an MCQ analysis in my high yield topic video um, where it breaks them down separately, but this is just section A. Okay, so the core questions. After that, we've got period three elements. So I said for paper one to try and revise period three elements and periodicity together because normally one or the other comes up. To my understanding, it came up a tiny bit, but there were elements that weren't tested on. Um, and it is quite a high yield topic for paper one historically. So I would be revising that where possible um, and see what's going on. So last year, it only got six marks in paper one. So if it was around the same this year, six marks, something like that, then maybe you don't need to revise it too hard. But it could definitely come up as one of the inorganic topics. But they may lean more towards the group seven and the transition metals, like I said. And then don't forget the reactions of aqueous ions potentially. But considering it was in last year, Maybe not. All right, I'm, I'm, I'm getting into danger zone with rambling, so I'm going to try and look through this a bit quicker. What else do we have here? Aldo has and ketones, nothing crazy. Uh, bonding was very high last year, um, proportionally compared to previous years. So was reactions of aqueous arms, which we've already looked at. Chromatography, nothing crazy with chromatography, guys. I've seen a few of you put in comments in about chromatography. I don't know why there's so much... Um, curiosity about chromatography. Last year with amino acids, proteins, and DNA, it received 12 marks. Now, you guys, if you've done the 2023 paper, you know this was all about thin layer chromatography of amino acids. All right. And that is explicitly mentioned under the amino acids proteins microtopic. Okay. Um, obviously, similarly, it is also mentioned under chromatography. There's a there's a ton of crossover 
with those aspects. So if you were so inclined, you could have chucked it under chromatography, but because it was only associated with amino acids and, and no other molecules, I decided to put it under this subtopic. So for whatever reason, they could introduce a chromatography required practical or any sort of chromatography knowledge. Um, but I don't know why they would do that when there were literally 12 marks on chromatography last year. So if amino acids, proteins, and DNA does come up in paper three, then I would be leaning more towards the theory, like knowledge side of things of the DNA molecules, completing the, uh, drawing the DNA structures, you got the zwitterions and all that sort of stuff. Um, going back to the transition metals, you guys mentioned colorimetry. So obviously that can come up, but you got the calculations associated with that as well. Um, so just keep that in mind. I didn't mention that when I was, when I was talking about transition metals earlier, but yeah, guys, that is basically it. I'm going to end it there. Amount of substance, acids and bases, transition metals, thermodynamics, rate equations, period three elements and periodicity, maybe, but they may lean towards the transition metals and group seven. Like I said, outside of that guys, I honestly don't know what's going to come up. Okay. They can literally throw in anything. I would just pay attention to what was absent last year, but I've basically already gone through all of that. Okay. So use this table to your advantage. I'm going to rub stuff out and you can screenshot stuff and, and think about it amongst yourselves in the comments in case I missed anything obvious. That's it from me, guys. I'm retiring. I'm going to go chill out. All the best. Peace.